That proposed school disciplinary policy that would have required expulsion of a student caught with weapons, drugs, or alcohol didn't make it past the school board last night. The measure fell one vote short of a two-thirds majority needed to pass. Also last night, the board okayed the return of driver's education for next summer. The summer program will be able to handle about 1,000 students and will cost the pupil a $45 fee, plus a $40 deposit that will be returned if the student passes the course. Testimony began today in the first-degree murder trial of Kerry Dean Moore. He faces two counts of first-degree murder in connection with the robbery shootings of two Omaha cab drivers. The prosecution has called three witnesses so far this morning. Justice Specialist Stu Nicholson will have complete details tonight at 6. Chemical waste storage and disposal has become a hot issue in the wake of the recent problems in Malvern, Iowa. This month, the federal government is expected to announce stricter regulations that will have a profound effect on Nebraska businesses. More from Newswatch 7's Anita Boyd. Some 2,500 companies across the state use and dispose of hazardous chemicals. Those chemicals are facing the strictest, most comprehensive regulation in history. Before the end of this month, the Environmental Protection Agency will issue rules that for the first time will make all businesses accountable for their wastes. When those rules take effect in October, businesses will be required to report in writing where hazardous chemicals go, from assembly line to treatment to disposal. Is Nebraska ready for those regulations? Bill Scheel of the Department of Environmental Control says he thinks most companies in Nebraska won't have to change the way they dispose of their waste, but he admits they will be faced with a lot of new paperwork. Anytime us bureaucrats get involved, there's a certain amount of paperwork. We're trying to keep it to a minimum and still get the job done and have the, what we feel are necessary records of uh, the material. That paperwork, of course, costs money, and a spokesman for this company says the extra cost will fall on the consumer. But it would cost companies a lot more to ignore the EPA rules. The federal law calls for a $25,000 a day fine for violators. But with so many businesses across the country producing wastes, how can the government hope to keep track of all of them? The federal government figures it will only be able to regulate about 10% of the companies that produce hazardous waste. But through that, they expect to control about 90% of the problem. We'll be taking a look at some special robots after this announcement. Spring is here at Omaha Jewelry. This year, the new look in jewelry is color, the colors of spring. You'll find Omaha Jewelry has the latest selection of colored stone rings, jade, opals, topaz, emeralds, and rubies, plus a dazzling selection of earrings, watches, and diamond necklaces and bracelets. Come see me, Bill Crelly, or any of our professionals. We'll be glad to help you choose the perfect gift of jewelry at Omaha Jewelry, downtown in the First National Center at 16th and Dodge. Should your public school children be expected to participate in daily prayer in the classroom? On our next show, we'll meet Paul Pierce, the author of the recent prayer law, which temporarily reinstated prayer in Massachusetts public schools and was later declared unconstitutional. The action has since sparked nationwide debate, and Mr. Pierce squares off with opponents of the prayer controversy on the next Donahue. Join us. It's not uncommon to find that something that's been lying around the house for years is suddenly worth something. Toy robots are the newest collector's item, and a New York auction firm has launched a campaign to find as many as possible, some selling for as much as $300. Here's the story of a man who's been collecting toy robots for years, but he's not selling. Griff has gathered this staggering collection of toy robots with an enthusiasm bordering on obsession. It's a very stimulating, lively type of collecting because, uh, you know, uh, nothing against stamps or coins, but they're inanimate and you look at them. These things come to life. They, 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 they show a lot of sparkle. Uh, uh, they're intriguing. And they're a real challenge to keep them working. Each robot has its own personality, it has its own identity. It's like the robot has uh, uh, 
an innate character all its own. Uh, they're, they're just different than other toys. Uh, it's hard to define. I know of no other collecting toys that, that have their own identity as robots do. I don't get a new edition for the collection and put it in the collection. I have to live with it. I, I put it up in uh, our kitchen and uh, with several other new additions and it'll stay there for 10 days to two weeks. And this way I sort of get acquainted with the toy. When I put it in the collection, it's not lost. It then has its own individual identity in the collection. Then I always remember about that robot. I'm gung-ho on robots. <laughs> My aim is to have the finest collection of robots in existence. It seems Griff has already achieved his goal, but he continues to search, combing the globe for the ultimate robot. From the Outer Limits, this is Mary Hughes reporting. <laughs> At least uh, robots don't have any problems with lung cancer. I hope not, but my guest said they probably had a, had a problem rust. with rust. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With me today is Charles Peters, who's the volunteer chairman of the Step Out for Lung Power, Glenbrook Rung 2, uh, with the American Lung Association of Nebraska. And uh, he's here to tell us about the Step Out for Lung Power race that's coming up April 20th. And Charles, welcome to Newswatch Omaha. Thank you. Really nice being here. I appreciate your asking me. Well, I'm Rhonda. glad you Thank came you. out on this kind of Morning. rainy Tuesday. It's making everything nice and green. Oh, well, that's true. Right. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Lung Association and, and the services that they offer and, and projects that are coming The American Lung Association is a tremendous organization. It's Nebraska's oldest voluntary health organization. And incidentally, partly because of their good work, Nebraska has the lowest instance of tuberculosis of any state in the nation. That's great. It is now, of course, concerned with more than just uh, tuberculosis, uh, asthma, air pollution, smoking, uh, they've done a tremendous job in trying to protect our lungs, and uh, so a lot of us are trying to help them grow and uh, finance their activities. In fact, there will be 75 years. Right on. Good. 75 right. years old. That's right. Not me. The no, I hope. Yes. <laughs> well, you look right. very good for 75. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, is this one of the major fundraising, fundraising events for the, uh, the Lung Association? Yes, it is. Uh, they have other activities. This is the only one I'm directly involved with right now. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a, a fun run. It'll be a mile and a half or four and a half miles uh, at the runner's choice. And it'll be at uh, Glenbrook, 78th and Vane, which is about a half mile north of 78th and Crown Point, just north of Northwest High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a fine course there. There's a clubhouse to meet in. And it's going to be a fun thing Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, uh, 1 p.m., uh, April 20th and it'll be a fun time for everyone. Now you have kind of a different twist to this particular run. You're awarding prizes to two distinct categories. Yes, part of the activity is raising money for the Lung Association. My 12-year-old daughter, for example, is going to go out and ask people for money, and then she'll bring her $10. If she collects that much, she has to collect that much, and then that'll be her uh, ticket of admission, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But the contribution, and this is what everyone can do, uh, is based on a collecting money for the Lung Association, turning it in, and then being eligible to run in the race, and uh, win awards for a number of different categories that are quite numerous. Okay. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. you have mentioned, in fact, on, on the sheet that I have, that you'll be giving uh, first place for the youngest and oldest male and female finishers on the uh, 4.5 mile and the 1.5 mile. Thank you. I, I, I didn't remember all the details. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And uh, also, I think there's an award for the largest uh, uh, fund uh, amount raised right. for the Lung Association. Right. That's great. Now, what's the fundraising team about? I beg your pardon? The fundraising team has, um, you've got first, second, and third place. Okay, the top gonna, in, in right some there. corporations and elsewhere, there are teams that are going out to raise money, and then they'll come out and run as a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this is a fun run, I want to emphasize, because some runs are intensely competitive, and... Uh, complete, you know, with electronic uh, timing devices and everything. This is going to be uh, for fun and for people who just enjoy running and enjoying being with uh, fellow runners. Okay. And for the benefit of a very fine organization, the American Lung Association of Nebraska. Okay. Are there any co-sponsors of this race? Oh, my, yes. Thank you. The um, Life Underwriters, and uh, with a good assist from the Bell, um, the Boosters Club of the Bell Telephone Company. Um, the Life Underwriters are staffing uh, the event and will have a lot of volunteers on the scene to uh, help handle the traffic and uh, tell people 
where to go next. Okay. Do you have any idea of how many runners came out last year for, for the run? Yes, this is our second Glenbrook run, and last year we had about 380 runners. Uh, we don't have as, quite as many applications this year, but I think it'll be a, a good run. I think there'll be lots of fine people there. Okay. Well, we'll give a phone number for the American Lung Association of Nebraska. If you would like to have more information and where to pick up a, an entry blank, the number is 393-2222. That's 393-2222. And that run, step out for lung power, Glenbrook Run 2, is April 20th at 1 p.m. And that's 4.5 miles or 1.5 miles. Right. And I guess it can be a family affair, so you can oh, have yes. the kids and the grandparents and the parents sure. and Come the on dog, I suppose, oh, yes. if you want well, to. Well, I don't remember. I don't think I have a class for dogs. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Charles, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Coming yeah. up next is Jeff Gallatin, the weather. They were strict because they wanted to lose me as a customer. Nancy Fontaine tells why weight loss clinic really works. The counselors were firm with me, so I'd lose the weight and learn how to keep it off without boring exercises gimmicks or drugs and they were very encouraging too nancy yes i know you tried other programs how do they compare to weight loss clinic they don't call weight loss clinic for a free consultation you'll see why we lose more satisfied customers every day i wish my friend could hear what i'm playing but he can't he's deaf by developing other talents he's overcome problems caused by his disability Hotline for the Handicapped can answer your questions about problems caused by disabilities. They have information on financial help, employment, parking permits, rights, and more. In Nebraska, call Hotline for the Handicapped toll free at 800-742-7594. Well, good morning, everybody. It's pretty dismal out there, a lot like March, but fortunately, we're on the back edge of this large storm system, and it's moving away. Let's take a look at the current conditions. We've got drizzle reported at Epley Field, 41 degrees, Lincoln cloudy and 47, humidity 86 percent, winds out of the northwest at 18, gusting to 25, although around the region, they're generally out of the northwest at 20 to 30. Grand Island's reporting gusts to 54 miles per hour, the barometer 29.84 and rising. Weather Watch radar around our area shows some shower activity. It's light. It's slowly moving off to the east, and you can see most of it is off to the east of the metro area. On the national map, though, we've got a giant storm system, quite an intense one. It's caught in a swirl of upper-level winds that are just spinning around. That's why it's moving very slowly. But yesterday, it caused lots of destruction, tornadoes. There were 33 of them around the nation. There's a map showing the largest number of them was down in Arkansas, 13 there, 4-inch diameter hail reported down there. And fortunately, though, only one fatality in Round Rock, Texas, so it's kind of a tribute to the warning system. Back on the national map, though, this storm system will very slowly move eastward. We're, as I mentioned, we're on the back edge, in the clouds, cold, brisk northwesterly winds between this low and the strong high. They'll be with us today. It looks like we'll see some sunshine tomorrow, and the winds will die down and temperatures will get back into the 50s, so we'll be recovering back to better weather. In the past 24 hours, though, we had quite a drastic change. We went from a nice high yesterday afternoon of 69 to a low, which is the current North Omaha temperature of 40 degrees. Only two one hundredths of an inch of precipitation so far, just enough to make it kind of nasty out there. Sunset time tonight at 6.56, and it'll come up tomorrow morning at 5.54. On the forecast board for today, you can see the back edge of the clouds is through central Nebraska. Strong northwesterly winds keep temperatures in the low 40s in our area, Lincoln into the upper 40s. The light rain and rain shower activity will be slowly moving off to the east, although it'll probably still be around in our area on and off for the next few hours. A little light snow up to the north. Here comes the better weather for tomorrow. Details of my forecast then for our region. Call for light showers, especially off to our east, with a high of 45 winds strong out of the northwest at 20, gusting to 40 and possibly higher. Cloudy skies generally tonight with a low of 34. And then we look for tomorrow to see some sunshine, partly cloudy skies, milder temperatures, less winds, a high of 54. Fair skies tomorrow night with a low of 35. And it looks like some more clouds heading in on for Thursday, but milder temperatures. Now here's Dave with this morning's markets. Thanks, Jeff. For the most part, they're up today, except for hogs, which are down. First, those 1130 prices on the Dow Jones Industrials, standing at 768.60 up. 26. That's 11.30 price. May wheat at 4.09 is up six and three quarters. 
and May corn at 270 and a quarter, that's up two and a quarter, and May soybeans at 590, up four and a half. That's mid-morning prices from the Chicago Board of Trade. There are 3,500 cattle down at the Omaha stockyards. The steers firm to 50 higher, ranging from 63.25 to 64.50, and topping at 65. Heifers 25 to 75 higher, ranging from 61 to 62.75, topping at 63. And there are 6,200 hogs, the butchers at $1.75 to 225 lower, ranging from 228 to uh, 228. 28.25 to 28.75, and there are 200 sheep down at the stockyards today. Our farm commentator, Hugh Tinley, is today more of a consumer commentator. Today, Hugh looks at some food bargains to watch for. Well, Dave, I think beef prices are headed even higher. Supplies are real tight, so if you have room in your freezer, now might be the time to stock up on beef because you might be glad later on that you did. We're in pretty good shape on fruits and vegetables. You don't need to worry about them. And it's about the same true with dairy products as well. No worry here. You might pay to take a look at sugar, though, and stock up on that, uh, because I'm sure that sugar prices are going to be considerably higher this summer. As we get into the cookout season, we're going to find that chickens will keep ratcheting up in price. But if you want to use turkeys, why, you're going to find those are cheaper. There's, uh, surprisingly enough, quite an inventory of turkeys on hand. And pork is the same way. You'll note lots of specials here on pork, so you should be able to get some pretty good bargains between, on pork between now and spring. Thanks, Hugh. That's the Farm News and Markets. Dave Foote will be back after these messages. The recipe calls for one cup of brown sugar. But since you love brown sugar, you naturally add two. And then there's the raisins. The only problem is getting the batter into the oven before you eat it all. Our families help us learn more about the world we live in. Parents offer their children the knowledge of experience and love. Because love is a family affair. A message of love and concern from Boys Town. Concerning Rollo, see, it's my business, too. I'm the co-manager of the group. Yeah. The what? You heard me, the co-manager of the group. We're a team. Yeah, in the tradition of other uh, great teams in the show business, you know, like Barnum and Bailey and frickin' Track. <laughs> what is six foot seven and weighs 299 pounds, hateful, cruel, and ugly? Your mama! <laughs> Laugh with Sanford and Son, weekdays at 5 on Channel 7. Sounds kind of like Dragnet, but here's a story from actual police files. The names were left out to protect the innocent. Anyway, here goes. A silent alarm brought police to a store in Phoenix, Arizona, trapped inside a 15-year-old robbery suspect. An officer warned the suspect that police were bringing in the canine corps. Then the officer started barking. Police say the teenager came out as soon as the officers promised they wouldn't let the so-called police dog loose. Okay. <laughs> Dragnet oh, Deluxe. That's Charles should have had. Yes, he would have loved that one. What do we have coming up this afternoon at 3 o'clock? Yeah. A special program. On a much more serious note, Dave, I was just on the phone with ABC in New York, and they're planning to run a special at 3 o'clock today. That's 3 o'clock our time on the hostage situation. And during that special, it'll run about a half hour, they will have an interview with uh, Captain Paul Needham of Bellevue, who is one of the hostages in Tehran. It was an interview in Tehran. I understand he is doing all right. He's in, in pretty good health, at least according to the person from ABC who I talked. That's at 3 o'clock today. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you for joining us. And join Carol and Ted tonight at 6 and 10. You have a super day.
developing and printing with coupon from Sunday and Monday's World Herald. This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. The broadcasters of your area, in voluntary cooperation with the FCC and other authorities, have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed where to tune in your area for news and official information. This station serves the East Central Nebraska area. This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. Feast your eyes and ears on a delectable dish of English trifle. Gilbert and Sullivan's enchanting light opera, The Pirates of Penzance. At the Orpheum, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, April the 17th, 19th and 20th. Bring the family. Call Opera Omaha for tickets now. Sanford and Son, weekdays at 5. 